If you have ever thought about starting your own podcast, you should check out Riverside. Riverside is an online recording studio that lets you record podcasts and video in studio quality from anywhere. And if you click on the affiliated link in the episode description and you buy a subscription, you will also be supporting the podcast. And if you're going to start your own podcast or you just want to continue to listen to great podcasts, you need headphones or speakers. If you click on the Amazon affiliated link, you can get great deals on headphones and speakers. And if you make a purchase, it will also help support the podcast. Both links will be in the episode description if you are interested. Today, when someone is expecting a baby, a lot of thought goes into choosing the right name for the child. People think about their favorite family members and their favorite characters. They read baby name books and they search the internet. It is important what you name your child. It is something that they will have their whole life. Now, in the 15th century, they didn't have baby name books and the internet to help them in picking out the perfect name for their child. But I'm sure they gave it just as much thought as people do today. I'm also pretty sure that when John Fisher's parents chose to name their son after John the Baptist, They had no idea just how fitting that would be. They had no idea how many similarities their son would share with his namesake. Hi, I'm Courtney Jewell, and you are listening to the fifth episode of the first season of History Shelf, a podcast about history that proves that sometimes fact is even more interesting than fiction. For the first season of this podcast, I am talking about something that I find to be very interesting, and that's Tudor history. Now, when I think of Tudor history, the first person that comes to my mind is King Henry VIII. But I'm not talking about him per se. Rather, I'm focusing in on his inner circle and the people he was an asshole to. And as I go along this season, you will find there was a lot of overlap between his inner circle and the people he was an asshole to. And this week, I am talking about John Fisher. John Fisher was born in 1469 in Beverly, Yorkshire, England. His parents were Robert and Agnes Fisher. He was one of four children. His mother remarried after his father died when John was eight years old and she had five children with her second husband. John studied at the University of Cambridge. He got a Bachelor of Arts degree in 1487 and a Master's in 1491. He also entered into the priesthood in 1491. And he was elected a fellow at his college and vicar of North Allington, Yorkshire. John won the patronage of Lady Margaret Beaufort mother of King Henry VII, and grandmother to King Henry VIII. John became Lady Margaret Beaufort's confessor in 1497 and persuaded her to fund Christ's College and St. John's College at Cambridge. In 1504, he was appointed Chancellor of Cambridge and Bishop of Rochester, Kent. Rochester was seen as the first stepping stone in John's line of work. It was the poorest diocese, but John stayed there for the remaining 31 years of his life. John fought for disciplinary reforms. He dedicated his life to fighting against Lutheranism. He wrote books in Latin against it. He believed strongly in the Catholic faith and in Queen Catherine of Aragon, another strong Catholic. When King Henry VIII wanted to annul his marriage to Catherine so he could marry Anne Boleyn, people took sides, and like many, John Fisher was on the side of Catherine. 
The once former tutor of King Henry VIII preached and published his defense of Catherine of Aragon in 1529. In 1529, John also ordered the arrest of Thomas Hitton. Thomas Hitton was a follower of William Tyndale. For those of you who have listened to any of the previous episodes this season, William Tyndale may be a name that you remember. For those of you who haven't listened to any of the previous episodes, and for those of you who don't know who William Tyndale was, or can't remember who he was, William Tyndale was a leading figure in the Protestant Reformation. Thomas Hitton was tortured and executed at the stake for heresy. So just because King Henry VIII was an asshole to John Fisher doesn't mean that John Fisher wasn't an asshole himself. In 1531, John strongly opposed granting King Henry VIII the title of Supreme Head of the Church and Clergy of England. He also opposed the Supremacy Act of 1534. In March of 1534, the Act of Succession declared Henry's marriage to Catherine of Aragon null and void. Now any children that Henry had with Anne Boleyn would be heirs. On April 13, 1534, both John and Sir Thomas More refused to agree to the act of succession. The already ill John Fisher and Thomas More were both imprisoned in the Tower of London. John's treatment in the Tower of London was terrible. John, an extremely religious Catholic, was denied a priest. But that wasn't all that he had to do without. John had no bedding or clothes, and not enough food to eat. He had to have friends and servants bring him food. John wrote to Thomas Cromwell about his poor treatment in the Tower of London, and this is the letter that he wrote him. John, Bishop of Rochester, does not wish to displease the king. When last before him and the other commissioners, he swore to the part concerning the succession for the reason he then gave, but refused to swear to some other part because his conscience would not allow him to do so. I beseech you to be good master unto me in my necessity. For I have neither shirt nor sheet, nor yet other clothes that are necessary for me to wear. But that be ragged and rent too shamefully, notwithstanding I might easily suffer that if they would keep my body warm. But my diet, also God knows, how slender it is at many times. And now in mine age, my stomach may not away, but with a few kind of meats, which if I want, I decay forthwith, and fall into coughs and diseases of my body, and cannot keep myself in health. His brother provides for him out of his own purse, to his great hindrance, beseeches him to pity him, and move the king to take him into favor and release him from this cold and painful imprisonment, desires to have a priest within the tower to hear his confession against his holy time, and some books to stir his devotion more effectually, wishes him a Merry Christmas at the tower, 22nd of December. John's living conditions didn't improve, as I'm sure you've probably already guessed. In fact, as time went along, things only got worse for John Fisher. Pope Paul III made John a cardinal on May 20th, 1535. This angered King Henry VIII and numbered John's days. 
Sir Richard Rich tricked John into confiding in him that he believed that the king could not be the head of the church. This was treason. And so on June 17, 1535, John was tried and convicted of treason. He was to be hanged, drawn, and quartered. King Henry VIII feared that if they waited too long to execute John, that public outcry would continue to grow. If you remember at the beginning of this episode, I said there were many similarities between John Fisher and his namesake. John Fisher's namesake, St. John the Baptist, was executed for calling into question the validity of King Herod Antipas' marriage to his brother's divorcee. And John the Baptist's feast day is on June 24th. And so on June 22nd, 1535, John Fisher was beheaded, just like his namesake. And he was also beheaded on the feast day of St. Alban, the first martyr of Britain. John's courage at his execution was impressive. After his execution, his body was treated with disrespect at the request of King Henry VIII. John's body was stripped and left on the scaffold until evening. It was then thrown into a grave in the churchyard at All Hollows by the Tower. No funeral prayer was said. A fortnight later, it was moved to St. Peter ad Vincula. His head was put on a pole on the London Bridge, but soon it was removed as its lifelike appearance caused too much excitement. It was then thrown into the Thames. But John's story doesn't end there. John was beatified in 1886 by Pope Leo XIII. John became a saint in 1935 by Pope Pius XI, just like Sir Thomas More. John's feast day is jointly with Sir Thomas More on June 22nd, the day of John's execution. In 1948, St. John Fisher's College was opened in Rochester, New York, in the United States of America. In 1980, John was added to the Church of England's Calendar of Saints and Heroes of the Christian Church, and it is celebrated jointly with Sir Thomas More on July 6th, the day of Thomas More's execution. John is also celebrated as a saint in other Anglican churches. And that was the life of John Fisher. Thank you so much for listening to the fifth episode of the first season of History Shelf. There are 15 episodes planned for this season. Next week's episode is going to be about Mary Tudor, Queen of France. I hope you come back for that. A few things before I go. This podcast now has merch, so if you want to buy some merch to help support this podcast, that will be greatly appreciated. I created the merch on Teesprings, and I have a link to my Teespring store underneath the bio on my Twitter. The Twitter for this podcast is at History Shelf Pod. The color scheme that I used for the merch for this podcast is the same color scheme that is used in the artwork for this podcast. So there's reds and blacks and whites and there's even a purple item. If you want something in another color, just let me know and I will see if that item is available in the color that you want. And if it is, then I will make it available for you to purchase. This podcast also has an Instagram. The Instagram account is at history underscore shelf underscore pod. Each week I put pictures of the people that I'm talking about on the Instagram account. So if you're thinking while you're listening to this podcast, I wonder what that person looked like. Just head over to this podcast's Instagram and you will find out. 
Also, if you can and you want to get to my Patreon, I have tweeted out a link for that. Please don't feel obligated. This podcast is always going to be free. And you listening is good enough. But there are some perks that come along with becoming a Patreon. Including one of the perks being helping me pick out the theme for the next season of this podcast. But if you want to help out this podcast for free, there are a few ways for you to do that. One is to continue to listen. Another is to rate this podcast five stars. I know you can do that on Spotify and Apple. I'm not sure if you can rate it anywhere else, but if you can, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, share this podcast with your friends and family on social media. That would help out a great deal. All right, well, until next time, keep learning, keep loving history, and come back for next week's episode. Bye.